Don't worry. I'll be waiting. Nothing, sir. You see, the traffic on Glock. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. See you around, Mr. Sunday. <sighs> What's up, sister? This is the land of the dreams. The man we ran into, even though sweet dreams are nice, they're just. I suppose you have a point. Why do you say that? You think that man is not actually living. But people believe they have a predetermined value to fulfill. Gaining value means gaining. However, value doesn't come out of thin air. Are you suggesting that? Exactly. But, ironically, people don't think there's any survival of the fittest. No tragedies exist here. Um <sighs> Perhaps that man is just an exception. What? Yes. Seeing is... Robin? Uh, it's going... You're too kind, Robin. I can't stand being lonely or bored, so... This... But if this went on forever, would it get boring, too? <sighs> nah, not at all. Who would get tired of having so much fun? Every day, you get to wear fancy clothes, uh, explore all sorts of dream bubbles, indulge in delicious food without gaining weight. And you never get old or sick. As long as you can a room, this place is the ultimate paradise. But you know that only a few things can be brought back from the dreamscape to reality, right? That's exactly why I don't plan on bringing anything back. Just enjoying the dream itself is good enough for me. I mean, I'm not one of those law. Only in this sweet dream can I truly feel like I'm in control of my life and fate. Who would want to go back to reality after experiencing this bliss? I see. I genuinely wish you all the happiness in the world. And I wish you a fantastic performance, Robin! I'm off to the blue hour for the ball. See you later. Seems like that guest's perspective didn't resonate. She had a valid point. What you're trying to say is... Well, she did make mention of being able to afford a room. Didn't she? However, the paradise in our dreams... It doesn't have to end. No. And the paradise we yearn for... Shouldn't be just a fleeting dream either. Here. What an honor. 
exactly right. Even though time stands still in this dreamscape, it always feels... A philosophical mind. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, not at all, huh? With little time left, I yearn for... It's my pleasure. <laughs> yeah, and then... All my comrades died. My hometown was wiped out by neutron bombardments. I couldn't bear to live with everything I knew gone. That's when I heard about a possible solution here, so I came. How heart-wrenching. I hope the family has been able to help you. They have. And I'm truly grateful for that. They provided me with a comfortable room, the most advanced life support services in the cosmos, and a stellar team of caregivers. My physical body is now in the dream pool, sustained by life support. The me you see here is whole, rational, and no different from any other person. But I can't say the same for the me in the hotel room. My true appearance. No. I hope you never have to witness it, Robin. So... You'll be living forever in this dreamscape. Right? <laughs> Just being able to live at all is good enough for me. Whether it's in this dreamscape or not, well... I don't really have much say in the matter. My world has been torn apart. And my life could end any second. So, even if this whole place is an illusion, it's still my paradise. And I'll treasure every moment I spend here. <laughs> How I envy those everlasting things. No man's story. That's precisely... However, even this sweet dream has its limitations. While it provides... There will be a way out. Stream four. <laughs> Gleam of old place. <laughs> Look what we have here. A lovely young lady. Wait. Is that... me? Brother. What a surprise. Show yourself. I've heard that a skilled mass fool received an invitation. Barely. The people here are way too gullible. Now that you've had your fill, it'd be wise to leave. What? Now that you have the real Robin, I'm useless? Uh, you should be thanking me. Because if it weren't for me... That was a personal request from the head of the... The Charmony Festival? <laughs> you think you can scare me? You think I've no idea what you're planning? I don't care what you're thinking, Chicken Wing Panacone. The Stop it. <laughs> What's the rash, chicken wing boy? Did I- Our paradise is none of your concern, Master Fool. All right, all right. I'll go. But Robin, do you really believe those living in dreams can- Ugh. Well, I've done my part. And now I'm here. The last two gifts for both of you. And don't lose them. It'll be thrilling. I heard a raven cawing in the distance. It seems the Dream Master will arrive soon. Haven of memories. Every touch, every moment is like a thorn rose. This haven of memories. Every touch, 
Every moment is like a thorned rose. Let's wait here for... Okay. By the way, brother, I heard you no longer have a sweep. Seems like a lot has changed during my absence. What exactly happened? Well... Someone has to stay awake even in this sweet dream. But that someone doesn't have to be you, or anyone in particular. You're carrying too much on your shoulders, brother. The paradise in our dreams... It shouldn't be like this. Hanakoni is nothing more than a dream. It can't erase- Remember the old man we met earlier? That might be true, but even without Penacomi, he could have chosen another path. That path may have been more ordinary and challenging, but now he is receiving hospice care in a comatose state, and his fate is sealed. Is Penacomi granting these people a future, or is it taking it away from them? Well. <laughs> Don't forget this. Not everyone really has a future. The future for humanity is like the sky for birds. Do you remember how we took in that little Charmony dove when we were young? Yeah. We well, I... I didn't mention what happened to it in my letters, because I didn't want to upset you. Shortly after you left, it crashed to it. I had surmised as much. I knew you wouldn't have avoided mentioning the bird for no reason. Despite that unfortunate outcome, I still believe it was the right decision. Birds aren't meant to spend their lives in cages. They belong in the sky, even if they can't fly. But here's the thing. If there are birds in this world that can never fly, can we really assert that they belong in the sky? Are you implying that the same goes for humans too? Let's take the Astral Express as an example. The Nameless made tremendous efforts to bridge worlds, gaining fame across the universe. However, that's because the pursuit of the Trailblaze exceeds the capabilities of ordinary humans. Otherwise, why would this path be filled with broken rails and abandoned express? That's just... sophistry. If that were true... Unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. Another name for the future is self-value. While this world has its fair share of heroes who inspire people and garner admiration for their heroic deeds, the majority of ordinary people will never become heroes in their lifetime. Some are born weak and vulnerable. Some find themselves trapped in unfortunate circumstances. Some fall victim to malice and cowardice. When it comes to survival, everyone is equal and the weak can only watch as their value gets constantly diminished. That's why we should care for the weak and support them as if their suffering were our own. That's what the Odes of Harmony have always taught us. While the Harmony holds noble aspirations, the strong will always be strong, and the weak will always be weak. Even in this carefree dream, Human nature contains greatness, but it also harbors inherent weaknesses that can't be eradicated. In the end, if people can't even secure their own survival, they won't care about the illusory future of equality. As long as the law of survival of the fittest prevails, there will always be fledglings crashing to their death. But if people don't live for the future, do they merely exist for survival? If even you... <sighs> P. 
people often forget that when the first bird took flight, the entire world, no more fledglings would ever crash to their death. Are you reading, sister? Mr. Gopher Wood gave me a picture book. If I could become a corn master, I'd like to summon Dominicus, the harmonious choir. I want to sing with everyone and spread our wishes so that all can feel happiness and joy. <laughs> I see. Then I would summon the harmonious choir. Don't you have a wish of your own, brother? Of course I do. It's just that it includes your wish and everyone else's. I then let's build a stage there and invite everyone to our performance so that both our wishes. It's a deal then. Yeah, it's a deal. But how can I become a chord master? Hmm. Maybe you will have to become a star first. You're back sooner than I thought. Any results? Yes. And now. <laughs> but pardon me if I sound. Why else would he have chosen to sleep in solitude? Staking everything on somebody, you have the numbers. And in numbers comes strength. So that... Uh, got any more in... As I see it, relying on Welt's negotiations alone is far from enough. Hanakoni is our rival's home turf. And we... We're more familiar with the Stellaron's properties than most. And since it's the key to stabilizing the sweet dream, it's vital to the family's interests. By attacking their core interests, they're bound to retaliate hastily. And as the saying goes, haste makes waste. That's right. As long as we pose a threat to the Stellaron, either with words or otherwise, we have a chance at gaining the upper hand. But the problem is, on the eve of the Charmony Festival opening, how exactly are we going to get close to the theater? Hmm. So, no one's gonna say anything? Then I'll raise my hand. I know the answer to this question. <sighs> the express crew would have been disbanded. So, I heard that before the Charmony Festival begins, there'll be a pageant to kick off the festival. It's called the... Soul Glad TM Festivity Auditions, or something. As long as we clinch the top spot, we'll be able to attain the title of Festive Superstar and be able to personally bask. So, how do we go about participating in these festivity auditions? <laughs> I. Oh, to tell you the truth. So they're still running this thing, huh? We'll follow Marge's plan. Mr. Gallagher, will you be joining us? I'm afraid I won't have the time. As a virtual character, I've already completed my final mission. Whether Penacone can awaken from this dream is all down to you. Should we ever cross paths again? I'd love for you to visit the Express. All right. I'll have to add to that data bank of yours you've got on the Express. And Miss Firefly. We thank you for all your support. We've already come this far together. I'd like to join you for the rest of your journey on Penacone. I'm pleased that we can finally fight shoulder to shoulder. I couldn't ask for a better ending. This is also the spirit of the Trailblaze. Now, everyone. As the last group of contestants. Would you be open to a brief exclusive? Your journey is long and. The sword and rose! 
My knight's head is hard as steel. People are pouring in. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Coming towards us now is one of Pentecost. Allow me to introduce myself. Mm, hello, everybody. Ahem. <clears throat> Don't you guys need to hide your identities? Can't hide it anyways. Pentecost is plastered with our posters. Nameless guests. This place is buzzing. That's right. This place is a miniature representation of that time known as the era filled with boundless possibilities. Nameless, your arrival reminds me of the grand occasion when Pentecone was first established. I was still a young, bright-eyed lad back then, lured here by the watchmaker's ads, full of zeal and ready to make my first fortune in life. Once, during a particularly grueling day, I passed out and was resuscitated by a drink from Mr. Sousa. That sweet taste has since been etched in my mind and that was what drove me to create the soul glad that we all know and love today. The dream chasing era was truly a wondrous time. Oh, I miss those days and the watchmaker. Scorchstand Hall is my homage to that time of boundless possibilities. I wholeheartedly hope you make it to the finish and emerge as the next superstars of Pentecost. Now then, is there anything you'd like to say before the competition officially begins? into the uncharted and... I hope that by the end of this journey... <laughs> ah, a wonderful witch! Safety first, everyone. <laughs> Simply... 
waiting for you. Our three stand in the last bones are the rules. Simple. Everyone, as the Charmony Festival is, March and I haven't known this firefly for too long, and I'll fine by me. All right. Split into the assigned groups then. Stream four. Clean four. Welcome to the first stage in the school of acting challenge. Now to introduce the rules of this challenge to you. There are three stages up ahead. On each, you will find an outline of a script. These three scripts were written by the legendary filmmaker, The Watchmaker, and depict various stories from Penacoli's era of pioneering. Your task is to bring those moments to life, find the right words, and act convincingly to make the judges feel the script's intended emotions. Oh, I wish you a successful performance. Also, a bit of trivia. The record score for this stage is held by a participant with fiery red hair. His exceptional performance brought even the strictest judge to tears. Oh, it's like he wasn't even acting at all. Uh, we are running out of time, so let's get this over with quickly. of the dreamscape, braving the cold wind, choking on the dust, and suddenly a fierce memory zone mean blocks your path. Now, Mr. Greyhair, what line... No, that's not right. You're trying to express disappointment. Why do you sound so chipper? 